Hello, everybody, and welcome to Community Forum. My name is Ron Vecchia, and this is another edition of Me and the Manager. And, of course, joining me again uh, on this edition is uh, our new um, town manager, not interim town manager, but town manager, and uh, the council voted uh, to, to bring on Terry full-time. Uh, he's done an extraordinary job in his uh, capacity as an interim town manager. Um, for the past, I don't know, how many months has it been, Terry? Six months? Uh, since so? September, so yeah. we're going into eight. Yeah. And uh, he's been, you know, had his, uh, his hands around so many critical issues that the council is in, in the town is facing. And um, today we're going to talk about several of the issues that were discussed at the last town council meeting, which was Tuesday night. And the biggest one is really the financing of the Center Business District overall infrastructure project. Um, as many of you know, uh, initially the project, uh, the, the, the number that was, was uh, banged around there was like $8 million roughly for the project. But uh, delving into it and looking at some of the other additional costs that are part of the project, it's turned out to be uh, over a $12 million project. So that's the, the first item that we're going to discuss. Uh, Terry, where do we go? Uh, first of all, how do we get to this point where initially we thought it was like $8 million and now it's up to around twelve five? Um, sure. Um, you know, I think the, the construction team and the uh, administration disagreed on the initial prices and the estimates that were coming in. Um, I did have an opportunity to talk to the former town manager um, last night on the phone. Um, and, you know, he's uh, reassured me that he did try to keep the cost down. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he has to push back on engineering costs and because the engineering, they're in a business to make money. Right. Um, so he felt that uh, he pr appropriately priced it out. He would have to look at what, it, what has expanded since he left in September. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there is about a, a $900,000 expansion on soil costs and soil testing. And we had to keep a $900,000 price in there in case we do find contaminated soil. On the contract. So that would be associated with, with former yeah. gas station locations, et cetera? Exactly. Okay. So we did on the contract two, which was Putnam, um, a little portion of Pauline and Walden Street, we did find contaminated soil mm -hmm. uh, up at Putnam um, and Pauline Street. So we have to make the assumption that we're going to find more contaminated soil on Hagman, and yeah. on Hagman Street, on Hagman Road, yeah. and also on Woodside Ave. Mm -hmm. uh, those, that would be, we're going way back where those pumping stations were at both of those locations. Right. Um, that we haven't dug in those areas in a very long time, so mm -hmm. we don't know what we're going to find. Right. So the engineers felt it was very important um, to actually put a placeholder in there. Uh, for the amount of money we would have to, we, we think we need mm -hmm. to excavate, remove the contaminated soil, and also transport it off site to the proper um, filling stations that we would handle contaminated soil. Right. So that's a large addition, mm -hmm. and that's almost a million dollars in of itself. The other um, unknown cost at the time when they first put this project together was landscape and landscape architects. And uh, at council level, they certainly wanted to see a land landscape architect. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's nice granite seats and granite walls, and it looks beautiful. And, and I love the, love the design, um, but the question is going to be is can we afford can we the design? Afford, right. um, so that's how it you know, really rolled up um, in, initially in the 8.5 administration costs. and. Um, Police details were not included. What so administration costs? We have to pay a resident engineer to be on site every day of that project. Um, that's the administration cost that we're talking about. Uh, police details, obviously, when we close the streets down, redirect traffic. Those weren't accounted for, and there was other administrative costs um, associated with that that weren't included in 8.5 mm -hmm. million dollars. So uh, you know, in the fi 500 thousand dollars, so was, we got it to a 12 million dollar project, and the 500 thousand additional to make it 12.5 would be to remove the utilities from poles and put it underground. Right. Uh, so you have no poles in the center; everything's below ground in the mm -hmm. center, mm -hmm. uh, and that really brought it to a you know a. $12.5 million project. These are all estimates. They're the best estimates that we have. And until we go out to bid, uh, we really won't know the true cost of this exactly. because we exactly. need to know when we go to the building bidding process. Right. So no one's going to tell us ahead of time what they're going to bid. It's illegal to do that. Right. Um, and we, we couldn't ask that. So we can have the engineers come up with projected contract estimates. Mm -hmm. And then we go out to bid to find out the real costs 
Right. Um, so you know, these are these are estimates. I think it's very important for people to understand that mm -hmm. the way the laws are uh, crafted here, we have to operate within right. them, wi within them, and we are. Right. Um, can we can we just back up just a little? And sure. Let's, let's talk about. Uh, the reason for the project, the importance of the project, and exactly what will happen for the folks that really haven't been in tune to exactly what this project means to the center. And I think people need to understand that before you know we start talking about where the financing is going to come from and who's going to pay sure. for it and how we're going to pay for it. Uh, this is really the key to any development at all in the center area is to get this project completed. Is that correct? I, I would I would argue it's the key to actually make the center operate in its current condition more efficiently and effectively um, because even before the development concerns and questions, we have to fix our drainage down there. Exactly. Uh, so we have drainage concerns that we obviously saw at the, uh, in times. September and October yeah. Yeah. Uh, of last year. Uh, the whole center was flooded out uh, over on Jefferson Street and Hagman Road had to be reopened. We had it closed. We mm -hmm. reopened it on emergency conditions to let traffic flow out of the center. It became, that storm had become a pivotal uh, moment for me as police chief to say Hagman Road can't be closed because we need it as a second egress when something happens over on Putnam. So, um, but let's talk about the scope of the project right. so everyone understands the scope of the project. Okay. What just staying with that just for a yeah. second, what physically happens? How do we improve that? The, just the drainage aspect of it alone. What do they actually do in the center? Do they dig up a road? Is there containment? Things that they put in underground so yeah, that the it, water is temporarily there? It, it's all of that. So what we do with the drain drainage system and the pipes, um, the, right now they're, they're eight inch pipes and so at certain spots they'd be uh, upward of four times the size. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's that, what's that do for us, right? right. Uh, well, it allows us to, to retain storage underground for a larger amount mm -hmm. until the high tide recedes yep. and then we can push, push it out. It okay. uh, so at high tide, mm -hmm. um, we can't push our water out. So we right. have to have larger pipes in the center okay. area to retain the storage on the ground. Right. Um, so the water and sewer pipes are down there, we have sewer backups, I think 10 in the last month mm -hmm. in the center area alone on mm -hmm. the sewer systems mm -hmm. down there. Mm -hmm. uh, so those need to be done regardless of what we build, uh, right. what the town allows to be built down there. Um, so, it, you know, it's really not a development project to me. It, it is really an infrastructure project. Mm -hmm. Um, and it will service everyone that's currently paying taxes and currently in their stores or houses in the center area. Okay. So the scope of the project really is from um, Somerset uh, Cottage from pa uh, Pleasant Street down yeah. the center mm -hmm. um, and then Bartlett Road from Pleasant down to the center, Woodside down through the center, mm -hmm. um, all the way to Pauline Street on Woodside. Yep. It doesn't include Pauline Street. Okay. Hagman Road mm -hmm. uh, will have a limited amount of drainage uh, installed there. Um, and also uh, Jefferson Street, what I like to call Jefferson Street, Jefferson Street Extension uh, <laughs> over by Cafe Delight yep. and all that intersection of Jefferson and Putnam, mm -hmm. um, which after the last storm, we were adding, I think, one or two in, um, inlets mm -hmm. which the water would drain into we only have one in that area right now yep. and that was one of the reasons we saw so much massive flooding yes. we couldn't get the water below ground quick enough okay. in that particular area okay. i've authorized up to six more inlets in that mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. to try to handle the flooding in that in that area so the stores don't get flooded mm -hmm. and it doesn't push down to the residential homes right. um, over by or the old surfside cleaners <laughs> okay. Um, so that that's really the scope of the project, mm -hmm. uh, as it currently sits at 12.5 million. It includes sidewalks, curbing, uh, streetscape. It includes new, you know, trees, granite walls, and uh, a beautiful entrance way that would uh, actually um, have a bench over on, across from CVS mm -hmm. that people could sit at. Um, it would have um, bike racks. Um, it certainly all will be ADA compliant and complete street compliant to allow the uh, most flexibility to all our residents, whether they're uh, you know, in wheelchairs, on bicycles, walking, or driving. Um, so that's really the, the scope of it, and that's what drives it to $12.5 million, $12 million project. This will be one of the largest projects we've ever done. Um, in about, recent history. What about doing it in phases? What's the downside of doing it in phases? In other words, 
let's just do one section of the project now and then we'll do it when we can afford the, the next step. Yeah, um, st do, it depends on how you're gonna stage it, you know, whether it works or not. Mm -hmm. um, we could, if you're staging pipes, uh, you're bringing out a construction crew and say, just do water and soil. Then you're gonna bring them back, tear up the road again and say, do drainage. Mm -hmm. um, we're paying a premium every time we, they activate. Right. and brought into the area. So it's cheaper and, and for the town to activate the construction crews once instead mm -hmm. of several times re-tearing up streets yep. over and over again. So the only way you know we could phase it in is um, one way I'm not a, a real proponent of is to eliminate certain portions of the project and mm -hmm. connect old pipe to new pipe. Mm -hmm. um, and that's always risky Right. Um, you're hoping to get the best connection you can get, but mm -hmm. usually those areas are the most accessible to failure. Right. And we don't want to have um, the bad press and public perception that we don't know what we're doing. Right. Because that's what happens when you connect old pipes to new pipes, they sometimes fail in right. those connections and joints. So, um, and then how, how do you decide where to connect them? Do you, you leave the residents out? Mm -hmm. and connect only the businesses and, and leave the residents on old pipes or you could put the old, new pipes at the residence side and leave the businesses out which really need development and growth. Yep. Um, so we're trying to, to balance that uh, the best we can. Um, as a resident I would be very angry if, if I wasn't the recipient of and the businesses were mm -hmm. and as a business owner I would be irate that listen I pay taxes too and I wasn't being um, dealt with first. Right. So you get into that. So if we're going to phase it in, I think we have to take a hard look at um, what can we afford to do. Uh, I've asked the director Caller and the engineers to go back and tell me a price to do water store drain and paving curb to curb mm -hmm. in the center area. And then can we uh, look at what we have in grants and funding already lined up through MWRA mm -hmm. um, to just do that type of project. And then we can phase in the landscape on mm -hmm. top mm -hmm. and maybe even get mitigation for people who want to build down there and say, you do the, the sidewalks and you make them handicapped accessible and this is the type of stamping we want. Mm -hmm. um, that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, there's other possibilities we're researching at the direction of councillors mm -hmm. um, to see if we can afford this project by uh, making efficiencies and cuts uh, in, the, in current operations uh, right. that we have around town. Uh, those are difficult decisions. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's certainly the council's uh, elected responsibility to fund us. It's my uh, job as town manager to carry out those funding priorities. Um, so whatever the council decides, um, as long as they, we, they have a full understanding of what's being cut and how it's going to affect the operations. If you cut personnel, it's always you got to cut two to, to make up for that one salary. Right, because all the because unemployment. Yeah and all the charges we're yeah. paying for mm -hmm. a long period of time after. So you, mm -hmm. for every one employee, you're gonna cut two right. in order to really see any savings. Exactly. Um, so you have downsides to layoffs and, and to do an infrastructure project like this. Okay. Um, and then of course, no, you know, I think the council was, was very concerned with going out for a debt exclusion for the project and, um, and by no means is that the only solution to this, to this right. problem. Right. Um, there's several that we just laid out and mm -hmm. I think um, we can get there. Um, but I think also uh, the, the report covered a lot more. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, people have to understand, okay, where's our reserves for the water and sewer have gone? And um, certainly, you know, they've gone for, for several other projects Mm -hmm. uh, that are that were worthy and and um, that, that ate up our reserves and you know con so, contract four was Sunnyside Woodside Pico and Cottage Park Harborview and Crystal Cove we spent 147 thousand out of the enterprise fund for that in 2016 when we built the new school um, we spent about six hundred thousand dollars in water and sewer um, down by the middle school Franklin Payson mm -hmm. streets to bring up those systems because it didn't make sense to have a new school. Yep. Everything looking beautiful and having old pipes in that area. And 2017, the Ingleside Park project was 120,000 out of those retained earnings. Mm -hmm. And 2017 and 18, contract five, which will be completed in the spring, um, per, uh, Pearl, Hutchinson, Central, South Main, Underhill, and a portion of Winthrop Street um, is using about $600,000 of those retained earnings. Okay, for, for just for the purposes of folks at home understanding that are not familiar with the, you know, the, the funding and where their money goes when they pay for their water and sewer bills. 
So we have a rate structure and, and those rates are established and there should be incremental increases during the course of maybe years so that there's enough money in that account to fund these kinds of projects. So what has happened? Have, have we raised the rates? I know you look at your water bill right now and some of the water bills are out of sight. So what are we looking at and what's the impact sure, of this I'm, project? Right now our combined rate is 1690. It has gone up. Mm -hmm. It hadn't gone up in, in the years past. It, it spiked in 2016 by DOR regulation and mm -hmm. then we brought it back down. Okay. Um, so really we're, we're below where we should be. We should have just left it where it was. I, I think it was 18, um, $18 mm -hmm. and it should have just left it there and then people would, wouldn't have to always worry about these rates going up and down right. and the flexibility of that. So uh, currently um, it's 1690 and you know those pay for water and sewer employees. It pays for the water and sewer equipment. It pays for the water and sewer indirect costs. Uh, meaning health insurance and stuff only associated with those employees assigned to water and sewer. Water and sewer. Okay. Not for the entire DPW. So it's very specific mm -hmm. on what can be charged off there. The CFO ensures that the proper amounts are getting charged off. Mm -hmm. Mr. Calla doesn't do that. The CFO does that. Right. So I just want everyone to understand that. That's not the director of this department that's doing that. It's mm -hmm. being done by the CFO. Um, so as we burnt down these reserves, we didn't want to raise the rates higher, um, so they kept it the same. Mm -hmm. So as a result of that, right now, we have $42,000 in the water reserve. In the sewer capital reserve, uh, we have about $342,000. We're projecting about a $400,000 deficit just for this year in the water and sewer. So uh, in order to close that gap, I'll be bringing a motion forward to transfer f from the water, uh, the, from the SOAR enterprise and capital fund mm -hmm. to the operations fund, $300,000. That'll leave us 42,000 in that account mm -hmm. uh, for, for any emergencies. And then we have to raise the, raise the rate uh, to make up the difference. And also to carry forward the next year, what we project that the increases are gonna be. Mm -hmm. um, right before coming on the show, you know, MWRA has just sent us notification that they're going to increase it to about 3.2%. That was higher than we expected. So it was about $120,000 more than we expected. Okay. Um, so these rates have to, now that I said that what we're going to raise them to, we have to go back and reevaluate them based on what the MR, MWRA just sent us today. Mm -hmm. um, so we before that, we were anticipating just to get us even uh, a rate between 1890 and 1915, uh, just to bring us even uh, for the for the next fiscal year, and then if we wanted to do the center project, it's about a 66 cents more to do the center project for the water and sewer obligations, mm -hmm. not for the general side obligations. Um, so it rate 1956 to 1981, and then we did a rate comparison and we looked at consumption and usage. And I know people's feelings that we chose these other communities, which are not Winthrop. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, we're willing to do at the council's direction, any community, that same comparison. Uh, we want to be transparent and upfront and honest. And then we looked at long-term debt, and Winthrop has fairly um, low long-term debt, uh, which is good. Uh, I don't like the pile up debt. I don't mm -hmm. like the, I am a big believer in let's use our reserves for what they're intended for. Let's right. build our reserves and then tackle a project at a time. Mm -hmm. um, this project does eat up our MWRA money until 2030, which is another concern that we, if we don't build out those reserves, we have mm -hmm. no place to go other than the taxpayer again uh, for a debt exclusion for emergency purposes or right. to our capital reserve account and then we have a lot of other projects that are coming and hitting us left and right here. They get the fire truck for $200,000 for repairs for mm -hmm. the ladder truck mm -hmm. or buy a new one for $1.2 million. Mm -hmm. I'd rather do the 200000 and get us another 10 years right. out of the ladder truck. We have the school playground coming. Um, DBW has, I mean, we bought them one truck out of the six that were taken off the road. Um, and once we put one on the road after repairing it, the drive shaft dropped out of it out of it, so it went back off the road. So we do have capital needs and projects all over the town. Mm -hmm. um, and we haven't even discussed you know, Morton Street, Pico, Bayview, for their flooding concerns and situations. Right. 
Um, so we have a lot of capital concerns that we need to start really looking at our reserves and, and, and using them appropriately and building them uh, more efficiently. Problem with the uh, general fund side is those reserves come from what I like to call leftover money at the end of the fiscal year. So if somebody projects they're going to need uh, 200000 in their budget and at the end of the year they only used 150000 then that technically that, that amount goes into what, reserves? Well, what, what happens is um, first we look at everyone else's budget. Yep. And we say, where is the gaps, where is the deficiencies and in in, in how much we need? Okay. And then we go to council and we say, we need a transfer from library to okay. the DBW or DBW to the fire department, whoever has access. Yep. And then once we're done with that process. Then the bottom line that's. Then we, the that's bottom a, line. That's left over. Left over. Yep. DOI then comes in and looks at what we spent and how we spent it. Mm -hmm. And then they certify our free cash, okay. which is all that leftover money that didn't cover anyone's deficit. Um, so we, if you look at our, our free cash numbers, we were high and we got lower, low, lower. Mm -hmm. And that's because we're projecting a lot closer to the line mm -hmm. on everyone's budget. So we've okay. squeezed everyone's budgets down right. Right. Um, uh, to a point where it, it's going to affect how much we have in free cash next year. Right. Um, so, the, the, you know, the, the more projections that we're, can, we can liberally say we can project a little bit better, um, the tighter our free cash gets, mm -hmm. and, and, and therefore that's, that's uh, money that, that we don't see at the other end. Okay. So, as it pertains to the project itself, could you break down, you, you mentioned certain aspects of the project can be charged to water and sewer. Can you break down kind of an idea so people understand yeah. the funding and sure. how we have to proceed? Yeah, so the, the funding breakdown, you know, we had a discussion, and it was a lively discussion, which is always good, um, between the, myself, Mr. Callow, Woodward and Curran, and, and the auditor and the finance team of really what's the, what's the obligation for what side, mm -hmm. and understanding that the taxpayer pays it all. Uh, but water and sewer on the right side and general fund on the left, it, it's very important that we only charge appropriately to each account mm -hmm. and not uh, overinflate one side versus the other. The DOR will, will come in and audit us and, and will be reprimanded for that. We don't want to put the town in that position. So I would have started that 75-25. I thought this project was more as a water and sewer project, 75% and this general fund side, 25%. Um, Mr. Callow thought it was a 50-50 split. And then um, we asked KMP Law to, if the drainage could be put into water and sewer. Mm -hmm. KMP Law came back and said, "No, it can't unless there's a leakage into your drains from the water and from the sewer. Right. The water wouldn't matter, but it's from the sewer side. If there was a contamination, then that portion would be able to be charged off. We don't have any indication that that's the issue down there. Right. So we took the drainage and put it back over on the town side, the general fund side. So the split is 65-35, uh, general funds responsible, 65% water and sewer, 35%. Um, the f money figures would be $4,314,425. And, four, uh, and compared to the general fund, which is $8,185,575. Um, you know, that's the, the, that's the real money breakdown. Mm -hmm. On the general fund side, we would have to borrow um, $5.125 million. Because um, we have that grant from... Because we have, yep, be, um, exactly. We have the $2.38 million mm -hmm. uh, MassWorks grant. Um, and then uh, we have a Chapter 90 uh, money. We get, usually get 280000 a year for Chapter 90. Mm -hmm. um, we have allocated 200000 for two years for the center project to 400000 that we wouldn't have to um, claim or raise to a bond. Okay. Um, and then we have uh, $39,000 that we're, we, we need to ask to come from capital stabilization to make this a, a whole project. And the complete streets grant and funding was $261,000. Um, so we have a lot, of, a, a lot of other funding in there, and the remaining mm -hmm. school bond uh, was 1658 that we're projecting. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, could be used. that could be used um, as, a, as a, another infrastructure project for the same amount of years right. as the high school. It has to be the same amount of years yeah. as the high school. 30 years. Um, so that's the, that's the breakdown, and that's why we're at $5 million mm -hmm. that we'd have to borrow. Um, and certainly, 
um, you know, we're going to work down the project and see really what's the options for the public. Mm -hmm. And I think um, I think it's a, a great idea, and I think the council wants to have a public forum on this. Mm -hmm. um, and we have those breakdowns and, and what what they mean, yep. um, and then get the public input uh, for how they want to proceed with this. Okay. But we have to act quickly because the longer we wait, the higher the contract costs get. Yep. Uh, the longer we wait to put it out. Um, less likely the uh, bigger and better companies mm -hmm. will respond because they're already booked work. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of things that have to happen fairly quickly uh, to get this up and running. Well, I know you've been working very hard on it just in the last couple of days as we looked at how these figures have changed. Uh, you, you're, you're addressing it in different ways, whether it's taking a look at the, the, the overall budget you know, some of the counselors that ask you to, to take a look at, you know, can we take this, can we eliminate certain things in town in in an in attempt to, to fund this instead of going for a debt exclusion. So you're coming up with many options that you're going to present to the council. Yes, yes. And that's a good thing. Um, well, that's almost the, the entire program that we're <laughs> spending on this subject. But, you know, it is, to me, a critical uh, uh, project that the town needs. Uh, I know there's, there's other things we wanted to talk about, the middle school uh, rezoning. I know we're, we're still at an impasse there, and we, we've asked the, uh, the current uh, committee that's, that's been charged to, to overlook that project of rezoning and so forth to come to the, uh, the next town council meeting, which is, is going to happen. Uh, very briefly, uh, we've got about three minutes, the TIPS project, uh, yes. which affects um, McGee's Corner all the way up, uh, up Revere Street, um, to Crest Ave. Briefly, just give us an overview. Basically, the town needs to, to put together uh, $325,000 for engineering, yeah. and the state gives us basically a $3 million project for free. Just slightly over $3 million uh, dollar project. So um, what's the importance of the project? Is, is Revere Street's very busy, yep. extremely busy. Um, perhaps one of the busiest business districts uh, in town right. I, at the current time mm -hmm. uh, between Revere Street and Crest Ave. Uh, and uh, certainly this will help all our residents uh, regardless of their ability uh, to access um, convenient the stores and, and, and homes um, a lot better avenue to, to uh, travel over mm -hmm. whether they're again on foot on in bicycle or car mm -hmm. uh, all the intersections would be upgraded the the signals would be upgraded new sidewalks uh, new sidewalks um, new roadway handicapped, handicapped ramps yep. um, handicapped padding um, so the people that want to travel by bike would absolutely be safer to travel by mm -hmm. bike mm -hmm. and those who want to walk would be safer to walk across the right. school crossings uh, two locations for school crossings there. Right. Uh, it's very important to me. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they also come in and look and say, these are our recommendations to make the street safer. Mm -hmm. So we'll have um, those expertise coming in instead of having our local experts at the TSAC level yep. uh, dealing with that. And, uh, you know, it's uh, kind of unfair because they're not engineers, and uh, these people are engineers and can tell us how to make it safer. Um, and that's the importance of this, and I'll be uh, bringing forward a motion at the next council meeting to at least fund this uh, 142000 dollars this year mm -hmm. to get us to the next step okay. and, and push us to the next step at the uh, tip round over at DOT. Okay. Um, so I, I think it's it's money well spent. I know I know we're looking for and asking for a lot of money, but uh, these make the differences in the residents. I believe and makes right. it play safer. Right. And just so if you go back to the middle school uh, run, yep. I just um, would I th I think you're 100 percent right. But, you know, having the committee in and certainly I think the abutters. Uh, should be notified yep. uh, down there. We don't want to run into the same problem as we did with the center, the center and yep. Somerset and Cottage Park Road. Yep. Um, the people were too busy and didn't really know what was going on mm -hmm. until and, until it was om almost too late. Right. And right. certainly we don't want to run into the same um, speculation or criticism that we did there. Right. Well, more information to, to, to follow on the middle school thing. And real, just with the last 30 seconds, the ferry, uh, you've done a an extensive amount of work on it. Uh, at the next council meeting, we'll have a report for the councilors and for the, the, the general public. Is that correct? Absolutely. And uh, Tanji Safuni, who deals with the ferry on a day-to-day -day basis, will be there. Yep. Joe Domelovitz uh, is tasked to come up with a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. As it relates to that, I'll be there for the financial questions. Um, so we should have all the answers in the room 
at the next council meeting. Good. Very good. On that note, I thank uh, the town manager, Terry. Thanks again for thank coming. You. Uh, this has been uh, me and the manager, a uh, special edition of Community Forum. We'll see you next time.